Listen, I tried everything. Almost everything was just not working for me. Music was not working. My relationship had ended. That's the moment that I got so intimate with myself and with God. Here we go. May I unveil the cave that gives my life a blazing smile. You're my and you are me. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays, yet another exciting episode. I am Isabel Masozo. Lockdown was good for me. You have to come to that place where you realize I am not in control. That's hard for me. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays, yet another exciting episode. I am Isabel Masozora, and today I'm delighted to be sitting down with my homegirl. <laughs> it's been years, years and years of us planning. How many years has it been? It's Maybe been 10, 8, yeah. 9? Feels like a century. Of course. Honestly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So my homegirl <laughs> is here to talk to us about authenticity, mm -hmm. living out loud, originality, and just embracing who you are, letting it shine. Now, I know this is an area that a lot of the times we shy from because of the judgment that comes at us, because of the images that the world tends to portray as perfection. Mm -hmm. But there are people that have stayed true to themselves and have ripped the benefits. So here we are. Let's dig in. Kushe, hey, it's good to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew it would be on this couch? How, many, How years? many years later? 10, is it 10? Well, it can't be 15. I'm showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> so when we first began, you were yeah. at the beginning of your career. Yeah. So passionate, mm -hmm. so excited about this future, this world that yeah. you wanted to step yeah. into. How are you feeling right now? I'm, I'm just so excited. Honestly, like it's, it's so interesting how like every chapter of my life mm -hmm. opens up this like new possibility of, yes. of what I can do with my music, networking that I'm doing, the people I'm connecting with. I'm just, I'm just too excited, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excited is one of the things I always used to describe you. You've always <laughs> been this ball of energy and yeah. it comes through yeah. in how you work, in how you interact, <laughs> in you. how you love. I, okay, um, but hey, we'll get there, <laughs> slowly. Okay. Your childhood. Mm -hmm. What was that like growing up? Um, well, growing up, well, I grew up in a family of five um, kids. I'm fourth of five, mm. and I was like, honestly, I feel like I, I always tried to like draw attention to myself, mm. which could be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, but as a kid, honestly, like you just want you you want the attention of your caregivers mm -hmm. and so i think that that's why i'm kind of like vibrant i'm loud yes like when i get into a space you will know yes right yes <laughs> you, you walk in with your energy with my energy <laughs> it's it. just like <laughs> let's go yes 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 um and I, I, i've been like that since and there's times obviously when i just like get back into like my cocoon mm. just to um i guess like bring that energy back because yeah to fill your cup because you you're for constantly sure. yeah. giving yeah i am constantly like putting it out and mm. sometimes i just like need time for myself to, yeah like, you know um get it back mm. but i i had i had such a fun childhood um my siblings used to like make fun of me because i was i mean i wanted to be a singer um, you, did you want to be a singer from the early stages of your life like like yeah. a child i feel like most kids wanted to I, I might be wrong mm. but like when you're watching artists on tv mm. like singing performing it's just like man i want to be like that yes like we all so have there this, was like, always silent... that admiration for people who right. performed and yes i would always mm -hmm. like watch all these performers i'm like oh my gosh i love that but my initial dream was to be a news anchor i wanted to be a journalist because there's <laughs> this um woman who used to read news and she would just command such like stage presence and mm -hmm. she just had like us in like in all like we'd all mm -hmm. come together and watching the news and we're just watching her and, and I wanted that mm. I wanted that 
<laughs> Good thing, you know, it's it, I, I got it from my music. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my childhood summed up in like... Interesting. <laughs> what about, let, let, let's talk about, so it's one thing, so many people dream. Mm. As kids, you, you, you want to be a doctor, you want to, to, you know, be a pilot and you want all of these things. But then life happens yeah. and sometimes a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, what the world is saying right. gets in the way of yeah. that. Um, what was that like for you? Because you were able to actually follow through right. and follow the path that you <clears throat> always wanted. Was it because somebody held your hand and said you can do it? Was that all you? How mm. did you stay? How did you follow through with what it is that you always Honestly, wanted? Honestly, I was just, I, I was a rebel. I was stubborn. <laughs> I never had a dream of being like a doctor or anything like that. Yes. Um, and I guess being stubborn helped me because I, I knew what I wanted mm. and I pursued it, you know, I, like so many doors were shut in my face, mm. but I feel like for me that kind of just like propelled me even further into like my, my journey as an artist mm. and I hmm. know, mm -hmm. and I, 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 that makes me wonder because yeah. most times when you hear people say, oh, so many doors were shut in my face, yeah. um, the reaction to that is often, okay, let me go back into my shell, mm -hmm. hold my Not cards, me. you know, tight to my <laughs> chest because I don't yeah. want the rejection. Yeah. Um, I, well, not you, but right. yeah. <laughs> how come did you do some work to prepare yourself for, you know, yeah. what you were walking into? Was it something yeah. about your, your childhood that shaped you to be, you know, that's a very interesting, uh, resilient yeah. in moments like that's, that? That's really interesting that you say that because in that moment, mm. um, I wasn't even aware of maybe the priming that my parents had had given me. Yes. Um, but now that you say it, I think I was resilient and I didn't even know it, mm -hmm. right? Because like some of these things have just like become buzzwords to us, mm -hmm. like, you know, and so I didn't even know I was actively um, practicing resilience when doors were shut in my face. Mm. But what I can say is being, and I don't I, I don't think stubbornness is, is in line with like resilience, but when you're, constantly faced with rejection yeah. you kind of grow a muscle that mm. and it could be bad right it, yeah it can definitely you, be a double-edged sword for yeah. sure right mm. where you're numb to that and mm. you're not feeling these things anymore but for me it kind of i felt like it was redirecting me like every time a door was shut i was like okay that wasn't for me let me find another door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? and also being a woman in that space, yeah. you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot, there's a lot that is thrown at you, expectations, yeah. trying to make you fit into yeah. uh, the box of what yeah. is perceived as sexy, perceived as appealing, oh, that, yes. perceived as mainstream, yes. but you have stuck to yeah. your sound. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, it's sort of a niche kind of oh. sound. And <laughs> yeah, you, it is, you've yeah. stayed resilient. Yeah, and, mm. and you know what? You're so right about that because I know those times when I felt that pressure yes. to conform to like different, you know, like the mainstream music. And there's nothing um, bad about like mainstream music. I'm a supporter of people expressing themselves as artists in whatever way that they want to mm -hmm. express. But for me... Um, the kind of art, the kind of music that I was inspired to create was not mainstream in, at that time. Mm. Times have changed now and people have like acquired a different taste. Yes, people yes. love like all kind We're of music. We're more open. Exactly, right? <laughs> mm. But when I was coming up, um, my music was definitely not mainstream, mm. right? I wasn't getting like gigs at arenas and stuff like that. No, I remember feeling like the kind of music you were doing was more elite, more for like the rich people. <laughs> They are the people that, that listen to jazz. <laughs> they are the people that listen to acoustic kind of yeah. versions and things like that. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, she's either going to really make it or, or she not. is, yeah. Oh, yeah. this is this is not ending yeah. so well. How are you feeling about it though? I'm. Was, was there any point, honestly, that mm -hmm. you felt like, okay, I'm not going to make mama proud, <laughs> not, not with this. Yeah. And maybe I need like a plan B because resilience, yeah. yes, all good. But those voices that are all inside voices, our heads yes. telling us we can't make yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I've had so many of those voices. I mean, it, it still happens to me today, right? Even now. <clears throat> yeah, because the work doesn't stop, True. right? Mm. Um, and for me, I feel... 
I feel that when I was feeling so much pressure, you know, wanted to conform to mm. the s standards of beauty, first yes. of all, in yes. the music industry, um, being a dark skinned woman. Yes. <laughs> um, and then moving to Canada, like that's a whole other story but also conforming to mainstream music, mm -hmm. like all those pressures. Mm -hmm. trying and to with a Christian background, because exactly. we met in Bible study. Yes, yes, <laughs> with a Christian background. With a Christian background, and here you were yeah. doing music that is that can be quite sexy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, like... The, and the, we love church, but uh, there's... Listen. Some, yeah, it can be the interesting. Way, the way that I explain <laughs> my mm. music, my art to people, especially in like the Christian uh, circle, mm. is I tell them that even Christians fall in love. True. They need to experience music that will kind of like make them connect to mm. their partner, mm. you know? Like, why not? Why am I not making... God gave me but this was gift. But was it challenging though? Like of going course. on set and knowing you have... You want, <laughs> oh, yeah. obviously, to dress a certain way. You yeah. want to put across a certain oh, yeah. message. Yeah. But you also need to be comfortable on yeah. that stage yeah. to deliver. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've had... Listen, I've actually had more um, of a disconnect with myself internally. Mm. than I did with people outside, like people telling me, oh, you shouldn't dress like that because yes. you're a Christian. I didn't, I got that condemnation from, my, from myself, right? Wow. And wow. that's like, that's the worst kind. Absolutely. Cause the, yeah, because the, the, the battle is in your mind. You're constantly like asking yourself, like, am I doing the right thing? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Mm. Music wise, like, you know, I, I, I had like so much cognitive dissonance because I'm a Christian. And then, you know, this is what they call secular music. I don't, I don't, Mm -hmm. By that per se, yes, that yes. kind of like terminology. But it is of, a thing. Yeah, yeah, it is a thing. People call it that, but I don't um, anymore. I, I see myself as a person who makes music. When I'm inspired to create, I create. And none of my music is obscene or, mm. you know, so it's, it's, it's beautiful for people to share. But anyways, <laughs> what I was coming to is I did face those, those pressures mostly from myself. And how did you deal with that? God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I went inside and i think i had the, the, there's a period when i was stagnant and i wasn't releasing music because i was going through that phase mm. i just come out of a relationship a long-term relationship and it's just almost everything was just not working for me mm. um, my music was not working um my relationship had ended yes and i just and i was in this new country right yeah. <laughs> so everything was just like oh my goodness overwhelming it was so overwhelming for me and i felt like that's the moment that i got so intimate with myself mm. and with god you know having these conversations and then having like building a community and it doesn't have to be big by the way community can be like two three people mm. and you're good yes yeah yes. i had my yes. my girlfriends you know who checked in on me and like were always like speaking positively into my life and mm. encouraging me mm. but that was one of the hardest times of my life you know falling into a deep pit of depression um, but then I came out and I guess what I have to say if anyone's even watching this like there's I know it's cliche to say but there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. there is yeah because yeah. if I could come out of that oof, anyone <laughs> anyone can. Yeah. and that's for you who's listening to us mm -hmm. if you are dealing with something that you feel it's too much for mm -hmm. you to handle it's okay to ask for help mm -hmm. we don't always have to be strong and i know as african women we are conditioned mm -hmm. by society by our family members by almost everything and everybody yeah. to be overcomers you know but yeah. you don't have to be you can still be brave and strong when you ask for help so you yeah. can reach out to us and you can use info at masozera.africa and we'll be happy to walk the journey with you kushe oh my goodness mm -hmm. So much to take in. Yes, listening I know. To I, your... I dropped it all. <laughs> <laughs> it all came in. Um, but I want to just peel back some layers. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
You talk about going through a depression. Yeah. You had just moved to a new country. Yeah. You had just ended a relationship. Mm -hmm. Your music, you weren't feeling like you were in the space that yeah. you wanted to yeah. be. And you talk about using um, some of the tools that were at your disposal, which was, you know, making sure you have um, sort of like a support system. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are some of the other things that, that sort of helped you come back to self? Um, I know this is not, it doesn't work for everyone, but I took a break from social media. Wow. Yeah, I did, which was so hard for me. If you know me, you know that. <laughs> I yes. know you and I know most of us. Yes. We all struggle I, I love disconnecting. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm, I'm an artist. I feed off the energy of my audience. Absolutely. My audience is on social media. Mm -hmm. I don't just make music. I make like, a, like you know, skits and stuff like that. And that kind of, the energy that I get from my audience kind of like feeds me in many yes. ways. And so cutting that off, ooh. What was, was that tough. like? It what was, was like, like really like? You wake <laughs> up in the morning. Because I remember when I decided to disconnect from mm -hmm. social media. And by the way, if you're watching this, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to spend some time with yourself. Yeah. It might be the best gift that you ever give yourself. It's yeah. good not only for yourself, yeah. it's good for your career, mm -hmm. it's good for your family, it's good for... It's good for you, what? all right? What? But yeah. unplugging, oof, I remember waking hard. up in the morning, <laughs> looking at the ceiling and wondering, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. yeah. It's too <laughs> silent. That was me. I was just like, uh, what was life like? Uh, yeah. Before, before social media. This, yeah. <laughs> so what were some of the things that you were doing with yeah. your day when you took um, that time away? Because it can't all just yeah. be about digging in and listening to right. yourself. Yeah. You, you've got to be a Honestly, little bit more intention. I, yes. I, listen, I tried everything, right? And for me, like, I, I'm not... I don't want to say I'm not organized, but I'm so spontaneous mm -hmm. that I just like, I could wake up in the morning and I'm like, I want to go for a hike. And Good. I just go, right? Good. And so I'll do things like that where I'm just like listening to my body. My body wants to walk. And me, listen, I'm like a dog. Like I need to be walked. <laughs> <laughs> I need activity. I need physical activity, mm. right? And so like if I wasn't on social media, like, you know, looking at like, Reels and stuff like well, reels probably weren't there at that time, but um, I was out in nature, which for me is like almost like my safe space. Mm. If you, if you've like seen my social media, you know, like I even you had to bring nature. <laughs> nature into my house uh, yeah, and your mom. music. Yeah, yes. I, I love to bring like, yes, nature yes, inside. yes, yes. You're a plant mom. I am. Yeah. And we, not to distract you, but I remember the first time I I saw that. <laughs> on her social media i was like what what yeah what is happening Mother right now you're like, you're like 25 indoor, indoor plants <laughs> let's talk about that situation yeah. where did that come from <laughs> no one Listen, 25. i've i've loved plants since i can't remember when i think well i think it came from my dad my dad loves plants he loves planting trees and so like subconsciously i feel like i grew up with that knowing mm -hmm. like plants are an are an important part of like your homestead your living space mm -hmm. and so for me it was just a no-brainer but i feel like it got really crazy during lockdown yes that's when we had 25 Listen. in one picture yes. and i remember thinking do we need to talk about this <laughs> i didn't have room for my furniture i was just like moving it's my furniture like away plants so my everywhere plants, yeah. and I but, I, but, but i think it's also very healing it is you know to have a space that is filled yeah. with things that make you feel calm, yeah. things yeah. that feed you. I could geek out about plants right now, guys. <laughs> you should sing us something listen, about Listen, <laughs> plants are amazing. Watching plants grow mm -hmm. taught me so much about like myself. I feel like God puts pictures and images and symbols um, in so many things around us. Like for me, plants blew my mind. When I started to have plants in my house and just like watching them, because when you water a plant too much, mm -hmm. it will die. Yes. And that's true for us, like human mm -hmm, beings, right? Mm -hmm. When you get too much of like something, yeah, it gets too not good. like it's everything not good for in you. moderation. And plants will tell you, no, 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 enough boundaries. This is how much water I want. <laughs> and so I was learning about myself through plants. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, okay. I'm just watching them unfurl. I'm just like, oh God, I could geek out. I'm gonna stop because I could talk your about face just talking know, about plants. I love plants so much, but let's go back to <laughs> going back to yeah. actually some of the things that you are doing. So yeah. with your off time from social media, mm -hmm. you are intentional about filling that up yeah. with the things that feed your soul, things yeah. that uplift you. Yeah. What would you say was the greatest lesson that you took from that time to yourself? And how did it shape the person mm. you have become now? I think the greatest lesson for me, and I know this is like a buzzword these days, is just allowing myself to be vulnerable because that was a very difficult thing wow. for me. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I had such a hard time like being vulnerable. And yet that's like where your strength is. Like yes. when, it, when I finally wrapped my head around what vulnerability actually does for you mm -hmm. creatively, mm -hmm. like when you open yourself up and be like, hey, I'm wounded, but I can heal. Like if you can't like show that you're wounded, how, how are you going to find the support systems to support you heal, to know what the wound is, you mm -hmm. know, because that's also an issue. Like Absolutely. most times people don't even know the kind of wound that they have. Yes. It could be an emotional wound. And we go around getting like, you know, so many emotional wounds every day from rejection yes. to just, you know, heartbreak. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The, all these emotional wounds that you can't see, but we, we prefer to like heal. Uh, you get a scratch. Eh? Band-aid, quick, quick, mm -hmm. put it on. Yes. But all the wounds that we accumulate in a day mm -hmm. and never like try to just, you know, just focus, sit down, sit with it and, and, and like acknowledge that you're wounded. So for me, vulnerability was just the key wow. to my healing process, wow. to me going inside and knowing the wounds that I have. And I, I, I'm still like in that process, you yes. know, there's days when I struggle and I have to go back in. I'm like, hey check in with myself what's How happening are we? what's happening yeah, what's where happening? are we at yeah and wow. there's other days to be honest where i'm not even in tune with myself um that i don't know what's happening and it manifests in like different ways like i lash out mm -hmm. maybe or i'm impatient mm -hmm. that's when i know i'm like oh something there's the state of my heart something's something's not right there wow yeah but i feel like that helped me a lot because even um, connecting with people and asking them for support, which is so hard. It's so difficult. Isabel, it's you the have hardest to, thing. I think for me, I'm learning that yeah. the reason it is very hard is you have to come to that place yeah. where you realize I am not in control. <sighs> That's hard for me. And that, that <laughs> Because I want to be in that control. Is, that, that is hard for <laughs> everyone. Yes. Yeah. But I just want to yeah. just really like remind us that mm. that's power. Mm -hmm. being, on, being in control is not brave. No. It, there's all. nothing brave about no. having all your cards laid out and yeah. knowing, you know, yeah. what's happening at every turn. Mm -hmm. Strength being brave that's taking a chance that's jumping when you what? do not know you're going to land in a soft space right what? Yes. and so wow thanks for yeah. sharing that yeah absolutely no yeah. I, and I, i'm glad you say that it's it's a brave thing because most people don't even we don't i I'll, I'll speak for myself i didn't see it as bravery i i i'm i mean that school of thought that thought vulnerability was weakness because that's what we have grown up yeah. seeing and being yeah. told. Yeah, and I, I men I, cannot cry because that's a sign of weakness. Right? Yeah. Strong women they cry yeah. in the bedroom oh. when they come out. Mom has everything figured exactly. out. Oh yes. my gosh, what a toxic way to to live mm -hmm. and, and think. Mm. Um, and I hate to use the word toxic because you know there's people who are in that school of thought right now and using words like toxic and just like make them defensive so I'm <laughs> I'm very careful these days not mm -hmm. using language uh, language like that that will just like make people defensive instead of like inviting Receiving, them in yes yeah so it's I guess to repackage that it's not a safe way for us to live mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. thinking that being vulnerable is weak for men for children for women anybody like yes. being vulnerable is the best thing that could ever happen to you, honestly. Yes, yes. And creatively, let me tell you, once I harnessed the power of being vulnerable, 
I have never been that creative in my life. Wow. Because like it just opened up like, I don't know like what it was, but I just felt like I, I was invincible. Like I could just create. I would mm. go on and on for hours and I was just so, I was busting with so much creativity because I feel like that's the birthplace for creativity, for, for love, for joy, for, is being vulnerable, is allowing yes. yourself to feel the full Everything. spectrum of yes, emotions. Absolutely. Right? Yes, absolutely. And as yes. an artist, listen, that's your powerhouse, yes. right? Because how do you create without harnessing all those emotions, mm. right? Because to be able to actually <clears throat> connect with people, mm -hmm. you have to tap into what it is they're feeling. Yeah. And some yeah. of them are feeling joy. Some of them yeah. are angry. Yeah. Some of them... And, and I think one of the things that I loved so much, even hearing you, is it, when we were... During the pandemic, I feel like <laughs> the world stopped. Yeah. And we were all in a vulnerable state yes. you know like everything was sort of out of control right, yeah. and for a lot of people i feel like it was the first time to expose themselves to just it's there wow, you're feeling yes. it you can run away from it you're yeah. nervous you're anxious you are in the house alone yeah. you are depressed mm -hmm. and i want to talk to you as an artist because mm -hmm. i've always I knew how I experienced the lockdown, how yeah. I experienced COVID and how it impacted my, my artistry. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I've had the privilege of asking any artist how yeah. that really impacted, um, impacted <laughs> and the, seeing what the world yeah. was going through and what people were grappling with and why you, how you resonated with, yeah. with where they were at. I'm not going to lie. The lockdown was good for me. <laughs> In men, in, in as a, as a creative, okay, right? okay, like obviously performing as a person who makes money from mm -hmm. performing mm -hmm. for people that didn't work out for me. Obviously, <laughs> lockdown, I wasn't making anything. Mm. But in terms of like my creativity, because like imagine this: you put a person like me in like a house alone. What are they gonna do? Like they're gonna go crazy and start creating. I remember you were putting out stories every day. Yeah. I would go and there would be like 20 lining yeah. up. And it's like, <laughs> you're geeking out about this topic and that yeah. topic and you're, yeah. you're being funny and you're being <laughs> emotional. And yeah. I just, it was just like, ah, yeah. coming at me. And I loved it. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. You. It was a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I was tapping into, because I feel like collectively, all around the world, we were all experiencing the same thing. Yes. And that was the first time that people started to notice, like, loneliness is a huge it's thing. It's a thing. It's yes. a thing. There we are. No, no, there's no distractions, yeah. nowhere to walk, no spending time in yeah. traffic. You're home. You're home. And it's not a loneliness for, like, a partner or, like, you know, because most times when you tell someone, oh, I'm lonely, they think, you know, you don't have, like, a, you're not booed up. No. Yeah. <laughs> there's loneliness for community, for that buzz when you go to places and you connect with people, mm. and your energies and all this. But lockdown was, like... Hey, it was showing us mm. that loneliness is is something that brought us together. We were alone together for the first time, right? Mm. And for me, I tapped into that and I was creating to kind of fill that void mm. well, first for myself because that's what I do is when I'm creating music or the skits that I create, anything that I do, I create first for me, right? Like I want to, if I want to joke out of it, I make it for myself and then release it to other people. To other people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, well, I'm glad to know that the pandemic, you know, actually affected somebody positively. We've, we've had a lot I, of, <laughs> there's, yeah. There's the, there's the <laughs> negative parts, which my gosh, do I really want to take you down? It was, I mean, it was depressing for everyone. Yes. Right? But, um, I think on, on a lighter note, I feel like I, as a creative, it mm. allowed me to express myself fully, um, especially on social media. So, mm. yeah. Let's talk about music. Mm. My favorite thing. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You've been able to create a lot, mm -hmm. right? I know you're currently in Rwanda mm -hmm. and you're part Rwandan. Yes, yes. I was so excited to learn that. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. Have you learned some Kenya Rwanda? Listen, guys, I'm struggling. <laughs> this is the thing about language is mm. when people, <clears throat> so like I would, growing up, like my mom would use Kinyaranda usually when she's like about to punish us. Like, but, but why is that? <laughs> my mom too. So my mom would be speaking yeah. <clears throat> like languages yeah. or mixing it all up. Yeah. But you knew she was mad when, when she started exactly. to speak Kinyaranda. Yeah. That is not good. Yeah. And for me, like I kind of like, 
in my mind, like Hinyaranda was this language <laughs> for like, uh, you're about to get your butt. <laughs> um, it's but, coming. Yeah. And, and, and also the thing about language, what I was going to say is when you, you can even know how to say certain things, but because you're so self-conscious mm. that, and people are going to laugh at you if you yes. say it the wrong way. Yes. Um, that's me and Kinyaranda, you yeah. know, because every time I would say something, it, people laugh at me. I'm just like, oh gosh, okay, never mind. I'll just... You have to keep trying. Yeah. You no, have I, to, I'm just like keep... anything, you have to, so I'm going to teach you some words. Please today. do, please okay, do. Okay, so do you know how to say hello? Of course. Okay, so we won't yeah. do that one. Uh, do you know how to say <laughs> Teach me thank how to you. order food. I know. Rakoze. Okay, okay. Teach me how to order food because food is my favorite thing. Uh, what do you want to order? Uh, I would like to have some matoke plantain. Shaki mizuzu. Imizuzu? Mm-hmm. Shaki mizuzu. Oh, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in my defense. <laughs> Oh my gosh, are we in the same boat? <laughs> but I think I'm doing a lot better though. I've been yeah. here for quite some time and I mean, yeah, it's I been it's... amazing. I feel like everybody is yeah. trying to help you. And they're um, so helpful. You know, yeah, 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 like you, you said Listen. it wrong, but you know, you can do I know. better. You, you it's keep different trying. In, in, in Uganda because like uh, my dad is a Mnyankore and my mom is a Mnyaranda from Tungamo. Yes. Right? Yeah. And uh, like in Runyankore, if you make a mistake, people laugh, you know, <laughs> which is bad because then you don't want like people won't learn. You right? don't want to but be here, laughed. But yo, listen, people have been so like, they, they laugh, but they're like, oh, oh it's, yeah. like, it's like the kind of laugh that is like, oh, oh you, yeah. you'll get there. Like we're, we're proud of you for just <laughs> trying. Yeah. yeah. Well, our time is first spent, mm -hmm. but I can't leave you without asking you a couple of things. Okay, okay? ask me. Now, <laughs> I know that you are at a different stage in, in your music and mm -hmm. creating. Yeah. What are some of those themes that you're so intentional right now mm. about exploring and why is that important to you? Um, so my last album, <clears throat> I was exploring heartbreak, um, healing, yeah. um, especially in the diaspora setting, because I live in Canada where like, I don't even know how to say this, but when you when you are born and raised in most African countries mm -hmm. or in African communities, there's a certain sense of I guess the word is Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yes. Right? Yes, Ubuntu. Yes, 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 yes. We have that. It mm. doesn't matter where Africans go. And that's the thing that connects us, is we have this thing. It's almost like telepathic energy, right? Yes. It's beautiful. Um, it's so beautiful. And I, I wish more people were aware of it. Because yeah. for me, it took me leaving the pond, like us where we live here in, in, in Africa, leaving, going somewhere else to look back and like, oh my God. Yeah. That is such a beautiful thing that we have because it's not there. Yeah. Unfortunately. That right? sense. I, I always feel like it's, it's, I would describe it as a sense of community. Yes of yeah. togetherness yeah. Yeah. and and you're so right when yeah. you leave africa you get a test of individualism and what that world actually and that looks like combined with capitalism yes dangerous combination dangerous combination because like even myself when mm. i moved there like i was listen i'll just give you a little story like mm. <clears throat> when i first moved to canada like i'll take the train because you know growing up in uganda right when you when you enter like a taxi the matatus mm. right you just say hi to the person next to you. Yes. Yeah. You know, mm. or Gambati, something like that. Yeah, you just yeah. say hi to people. Yeah. Um, and so when I went to Canada, I would do that. Like I'll come sit on the train and I just say hi to the person next to me. And, and they'll be like, like um, okay. What do you want from me? You know, because people are yeah. just not, yeah. not, not that they don't want to, but they're just not used to that. They're not used to people just like coming into you their space. You can't just come into someone's exactly. space unless they invite right? you into Yeah, it, unless yeah. they invite you into that space. And like, it's, it's very, for me now, again, I, I'm getting cognitive dissonance because on one end, like, there should be a boundary, like <laughs> healthy boundaries. I, I was actually coming there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then on the other end, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing to acknowledge another the existence of somebody existence. else. Exactly. Yes. And then just, I'm, I'm always trying to center black women in my music, mm. how we love, how we, how we hurt, right? And so for me, that's my focal point right now is, all those things, because that's where I'm at. Who knows? Maybe 
three, four years down the road, I'm going to be singing about something totally different. Because mm -hmm. that's, for me, my music and my life is just evolution. I'm changing. Yes. Every, every day, yeah. every year. Mm. I'm going to have something else that I'm experiencing that I want to tap into. Yes. But right now, that's, that's where I'm at. Okay. My healing journey. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so important for me to share this because I know... And I know this is very cliche. I know there's someone out there who's experiencing it, <laughs> but it's true, yeah. right? Because yeah. when I listen to other artists who like are making music that affects me so positively, it makes mm. me feel like, oh my gosh, girl, you were singing about me. Yes, yes. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe someone, you know, listens to my music and is like, I they are inspired by yeah. it, and I and I'm one of them. I remember listening to Kanyani. Mm which is my favorite you Aww, song thank you and i love it too i, I, I it just mm, that's the that's my feel good song yeah. you know that that's my jam i feel like okay mm. and i, I, I remember <laughs> i can sing it for you please <laughs> That's the camera That's right the camera. there. We get to have okay. a we get to have a kushe experience. Okay. Here we go. May I unveil the key that gives my life a blazing smile A day with you alone is like a planet full of stars You love to change my world And yes you do I simply can't explain But I will call you Oh boy You're my Kanyani Kanyani <laughs> Can you need your home? My <laughs> oh, oh, you're the best. That was amazing. <laughs> I love that song. Oh too. my goodness. <laughs> but here's the thing yeah. though. I feel like you sound better today. Really? Yes. Listen. You there's 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 definitely <laughs> I think that yeah, yeah, we musicians you do get better uh, with control, I, yeah. but also I feel like the texture mm. of your voice is, is just yeah. You know, you don't even think about it as a as a as a singer. You're yeah. not thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. But you're evolving. I guess when people yes. are hearing you, they tell you, "Oh my gosh, you sound different." Mm. Yeah, I think it comes maybe with age, just uh. experience. Yeah. Loved Thank every you. bit of it. Thank you for singing for us. Absolutely. Ah. Uh, Yvonne Couche, can't get enough of you. Oh, thank you. We have to leave it here, but we hope you come back. Oh, listen. I'm and we can here. talk some more. Yes. There's definitely so many questions I didn't ask. Like, yeah. are you dating anybody? Nope. Now? I'm dating myself. And that is the most important relationship. Yes. <laughs> if you have not dated yourself, mm -hmm. you have no business dating anybody else word i Fact. think we will live on that note yes. i think we both endorse this message <laughs> i do <laughs> thank you so much for hosting oh me. it's a pleasure it's a pleasure it's so, so good to see you I've again had so much fun so much fun let's yes. do this again yes absolutely all right that's it for wine down wednesdays we see we share we learn we grow and we hope that you did just that Remember, relationship with self is very important. Staying authentic to yourself, to who you are, that's the most important thing. Shut out the noise. You are the only thing that truly matters. And remember, you can always like, subscribe, help us keep this going.